Thank you for coming back to another Tony Montana video. On this occasion we will talk about a dog man that very few people outside of Mexico have heard but that in the opinion of many, is the all-time best dogman in Mexico. A reminder that all the content in my channel is published with educational and historical purposes only. Tony Montana's channel does not promote illegal activities or animal abuse. One of the goals of this channel is to preserve the history of the APBT breed and the individuals who dedicated their lives to them. In Mexico, many have dedicated August 17th as the day of the pit bull. They have also dedicated that day to the person who many believe is the greatest thing that has happened to the pit bull in that country. Gabriel Rodriguez the best dogman in Mexico. Gabriel Rodriguez Herrera one of the most important figures of the American Pit Bull Terrier. Admired by many, envied by others, hated by others, but always respected by all. Just by hearing his name, you recognized that you were dealing with someone who marked the history of the APBT. I tried the last three or four years to do an interview with him, he never agreed, he was a very discreet man, very distrustful, and very jealous. I'm talking about the best dogman in the history of Mexico, one of the best in the world and the history of the APBT. Someone who was not afraid of anyone. Do not take me the wrong way, in Mexico there were and are great dogmen, the intention of this article is not to take credit away from anyone. Dogmen such as Mr. Enrique Morfin, Mr. Arnaldo Cardenas, Mr. Salvador Estudiante, Mr. Ali Franco, Architecto Sanchez, Mr. Hector Rabago, and many more legends, were and will always be very important in the history of the American Pit Bull Terrier. But if we talk about victories, merits, champions, and grand champions, that throne belongs to only one, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez Numero Uno. If you are from outside of Mexico, it is likely that you have never heard of Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez. It is totally understandable that you have not heard of him since he was a very prudent person, who did not like fame or self-promotion. He knew the kind of dogman he was and it was enough for him that the most of the important dogmen, respected him. He liked to be an open secret to foreigners. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez did not like to appear in magazines, although he once appeared. In a Mexican magazine. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was satisfied that upon hearing his name, he was respected and even feared. Don't get me wrong, he was not a violent or aggressive man. He was a man with of character. When people made him angry, he would speak vulgarly even to dangerous people. People who did not allow disrespect from anyone. But they had so much respect for Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez that they allowed themselves to be insulted by him. He had a lot of balls, and maybe because of that, many people called him arrogant or even disliked him. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez marked the history of the American Pit Bull Terrier. He was a gentleman with a great career that to this day, no one has been able to match. Even when I tell this to foreign dog men, they are incredulous, but I assure you. Friends, I do not have to lie, what I am going to tell you is true, and fortunately, there are still people alive who tell the story of Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez in their own voice. I had the pleasure of meeting him, seeing his dogs, and treating him a bit. Let's start with the story of him. Gabriel Rodriguez Herrera, was born in 1935, in the municipality of Tamajuncal, in the state of San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Since he was a child, around 10 years old, he already had a taste for fighting animals. Everything related to animal combat caught his attention. From a very young age he put dogs of different breeds to fight, he also loved fighting roosters. It took many years for Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez to learn that there was a breed of dog created with the work for purpose of fighting. Dogs. This was likely due to his area not having much if any professional dog fighting at this time. Gabriel Rodriguez was an athlete, he loved to run and he was a semi-professional cyclist, and he was also a great businessman. Gabriel Rodriguez moved to the Federal District, Mexico. 
today known as Mexico City. And there he founded the headquarters of his company, Beauty Cleaning de Mexico. His company was dedicated to the cosmetics industry nationwide, and had hundreds of female beauty product vendors. He really was a very successful and visionary man. Due to his line of business, Don Gabriel knew Mr. Jorge Diaz. Mr. Jorge Diaz had a company in the same business field, however, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez did not know that Mr. Jorge Diaz was a dogman. At the end of the 60s, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez did not have a raw material to manufacture his products. So Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez communicates with Mr. Jorge Diaz, to buy what raw materials he needed. Mr. Jorge Diaz and Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez intended to meet at his house for business, but Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez never imagined that this would become the beginning of his career as a dogman, and that day would change his life forever. And lead him to become the greatest legend of the American Pit Bull Terrier in Mexico. When Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez goes into Mr. Jorge Diaz's house, he sees several black pit bulls, to which he asks Mr. Jorge Diaz, what are those dogs? Where did they come from? And Mr. Jorge Diaz goes on to tell him that those dogs are combat dogs, to which Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez asks in amazement to tell him more about them. Mr. Jorge Diaz explains that these dogs are dogs bred for fighting and fought on a professional level. He continues by explaining the rules of the sport and other details surrounding the matches. That night Mr. Diaz invites Don Gabriel to some roles, non-professional fights, and Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez accepts very enthusiastically to go see. Mr. Jorge Diaz and Mr. Gabriel go to Jorge Diaz's factory to watch the roles. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was so amazed of the dogs, that right there, that night, he asks Mr. Jorge Diaz to sell him some dogs, which Mr. Diaz agrees to sells him two dogs, their names were Gorky and Norton. He trained those two dogs and made winners out of them. A funny part of this legend story is that around that time, a friend of Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez offered to sell him a boxer dog, Mr. Rodriguez buys the boxer dog, and names him Whiskey. This Whiskey dog won three professional fights, the third fight he beat an American pit bull terrier from the line Stuffoler slash Red Lady he 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 he. So with those two American pit bull terriers and the boxer, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez debuted at a professional level. After this, he bought Nicky, a dog that he made grand champion, winning eight matches. Some time later, he acquired a dog called Joe, a son of Chamuco and crossed him with daughters of the grand champion Nicky, Stu Fowler Red Lady Bloodline. And here he began to form his own line of dogs, the Capelins. The Carlos Quinto. If you are enjoying this audio of history, press the like button. Also subscribe to Tony Montana's channel to receive notifications when more videos are published. Let's go back to the story of Don Gabriel Rodriguez. I have to mention that Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was very guarded of his dogs, he never sold or gave them away, he preferred to put them down instead. He also did not lend studs not even to his friends. His line is perhaps the most successful in Mexico and one of the most successful in the world. There were dozens of champions and grand champions made by him in the 1970s and 1980s. An incalculable figure, but it is estimated that there were more than 100. This figure is not an exaggeration, nor is it a lie. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was able to accomplish so much part because professionally, he fought dogs every week or every 15 days in various cities of Mexico. Helped by several trainers of course, at that time he was already known as Numero Uno, since it was very difficult to beat him. He had very good dogs, and great training. At this point, Club Rodriguez, which was Mr. Gabriel's team, trained dogs of other teams and on occasion had friends give their dogs to his team to make winners out of them, and time later, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez would return them as champions or grand champion dogs. He had hundreds of wins. For a time, he teamed up with dogmen such as Abelin, 
Arquitecto Andrade, and Piri. On one occasion, Mr. Rodriguez's team was training Piri's dog, but at the same time, he was also training his rival. Evidently this fact caused a problem that led to the fracture in the Rodriguez-Piri. Relationship At this time, the most influential dogman decided establish an association of pit bull breeders. This idea arouses after Mr. Maurice Carver warned Mr. Enrique Morfin that the United States authorities had them in their sights and to protect themselves, they had to establish a legal association. It is at this point that many dogmen in the United States began to show their dogs in in sporty activities, such as weight pulling, vertical jump, spring pull, conformation, etc. Activities that would later arrive in Mexico. So, as a precaution, in Mexico dogmen founded the American Pitbull Terrier Breeders Association. Some of the founders of this association were, Enrique Morfin, Arnaldo Cardenas, Salvador Estudiante, A. Bellin, Jimenez Brothers and A. Long list more. Meetings were held with an assortment of well-known dogmen attending. These meetings were held on Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez's properties. One night, someone asked Mr. Rodriguez how many wins he had in total, so they decided to count the wins of his dogs. They counted over 450 wins by the late 1990s. A record that to this day, no one has beaten in Mexico. I have to add that the total 450 wins did not include other people's dogs they had campaigned to wins or conditioned to wins. Someone once said, if we counted all the dogs I train, we'd be over a thousand. At one point in his career, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez kept notebooks where he wrote down details of his numerous champion and grand champion dogs. When the number passed 100, he got bored of counting and stopped. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez had a ranch in the municipality of Cuitidlan Iscali, state of Mexico, Mexico, where he had about 100 pit bulls and all of them were of fast lane level. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was a demanding dog man who called hard and only kept the best of the best in his program. There were several people who helped him train, to mention a few, Mr. Salvador, Akaditla, Mr. Mariano and Mr. Raul Ramirez. There was a point between the 1980s and 1990s when most of the dogmen did not want to compete against him, since they knew they could lose, if they found out that they were going to face Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez, they cancelled the fight. Few dogmen dared to face Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez, one of those who never shied away from Mr. Gabriel. Rodriguez was Mr. Salvador Estudiante, who we could consider, was his greatest rival in the 1970s. Given Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez's reputation and the unwillingness of dogmen to accept his challenges, he had to resort to painting his dogs and changing their names in order to get takers. Later, he had to resort to lending his dogs to other dogmen to have them worked. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez was not invincible, but it was difficult to beat him, very difficult. In the mid-90s, a plot was made to ban Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez and anyone related to him, accusing him of doing something strange, because the number of victories was incredible. There was a point where Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez could no longer attend events. He simply trained dogs and gave them to someone else to compete with, while he stayed at home. Eventually Mr. Gabriel got bored that no one wanted to compete against him and so retired for a few years but kept his line of dogs. By the end of Mr. Gabriel's life, Club Rodriguez was made up of Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez, Mr. Mariano and Mr. Mariano's brother. Around the year 2021, Club Rodriguez decided to return by breeding. Some of Mr. Mariano dogs off Mr. Gabriel's stock, and as was the case in the old days, they beat most of the competition. In their last run in the dogs, the club managed the careers of grand champion Steven Seagal, winner of eight fights. Champion Julio, winner of three fights. Champion Bruce Willis, winner of three fights. Champion Anaconda, winner of seven fights. Just to name a few. The aforementioned dogs beat the best dogs in Mexico and many from the United States. 
to name a few, Lavacaches, Black Rocks Kennels, Eddie Vasquez, Vinny Romero, and Texas Kennel. At over 85 years old, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez would handle his dogs in the pit. At his age, he never considered retiring. Mr. Gabriel had plans to continue competing with Sons of Champion. Anaconda, Champion Bruce Willis, nephews of Grand Champion Steven Seagal, and many more dogs he had. Unfortunately, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez never competed outside of Mexico. Although he had many invitations to compete in other continents, he never did. They even invited him to China. He was very distrusting. He felt that once in another country, it would have been very easy for one of his dogs to be stolen, and at his age, there was nothing he could do about it. Most believe his distrust of people was the main reason why he did not compete internationally. But I can tell you, he beat people from all of Mexico. He beat teams from Mexico that competed internationally. He also beat foreigners, including Americans who compete at an international level. No. Foreigner ever beat Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez. Not Americans, not Chinese, or from any other country. Heck, even Chico Lopez tried to acquire dogs from Mr. Rodriguez. Chico even tried to convince Mr. Gabriel to lend him dogs to go compete in Russia. Tony Montana believes that if Mr. Gabriel would have lent Chico some of his dogs, Chico would have stolen them and would have changed their pedigree to make the gullible believe they they were golden vein dogs ha 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 ha. Well, that would have happened to champion Lindo if Lindo would have won. Back to talking about Mr. Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez wanted to challenge Grand Champion, Teeter, winner of eight fights, with his dog, Grand Champion Steven Seagal, also winner of eight fights but the fight never happened. That would have been a great match between two legends. Grand Champion Steven Seagal, won his seventh fight, against a dog that had been game tested with Teeter. Many dog men felt this dog was better than Teeter and that is why Mr. Gabriel wanted to go against Teeter to showcase his Steven Seagal dog. Sadly, Mr. Gabriel Rodriguez Herrera passed away on August 17, 2021. At the age of 86. He left, leaving a void in his family, friends, the breed, and the sport that made him famous. He is gone but not forgotten. Those who saw him around the dogs will continue to talk about this great man for years to come. Don Gabriel Rodriguez, the best Mexican dog man of all time. His record speaks volume of his expertise and understanding of the dogs. If you enjoyed this audio, do press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Once subscribed, you will be notified when new videos are published. This is your friend, Tony Montana. Signing off. Until next.